please welcome to the stage the co-founder of Pixel Cabin, Michael Shannon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you today about integration testing and how we've solved this at Pixel Cabin. So a brief intro to who we are. Um, we've been working with Shopify for about seven years. Our other co-founder, Gregor, is also here today. And we focus on solving complex problems across a broad range of merchants. And this is where the idea that we wanted to try and address this specific testing challenge was, came from. We do a combination of app development and bespoke theme work. And we wanted to try and level up the test coverage we had in our themes with uh, the existing coverage we had on our Rails apps. So we're going to look at three things today. Why test? What the, what the value is to this? How to use Cypress to develop an integration test suite for your themes? And how to automate that so that it runs every single time you make a change to your code base? Now, while this will be a technical talk, for those of you that aren't developers in the audience, hopefully there'll be some useful insights uh, into where the value of this is uh, for your team and your business as well. So for us, there were a couple of key factors. We started seeing our projects running over longer periods of time, moving from months and into years with some of the retainers we had. And we wanted to protect against regression issues creeping into these code bases. We also started uh, growing our team. And we wanted to make it easy for new developers to join a project without needing to worry about breaking something uh, as they got on board with an existing code base. But there are a few key benefits uh, across all of this. It's going to reduce deployment workload because you're going to be able to push changes out to your theme quickly and not need to worry about having to do a lot of manual testing every single time. This will allow you to be more responsive to your clients and make more changes more quickly with them because you can deploy more frequently and more easily. And it's going to reduce that maintenance overhead once you've made a change in production. It's going to be less likely that you've got a bug that you need to scramble on a weekend to fix. Um, so we're going to look at integration testing today. Uh, Unit testing for liquid themes is a little bit difficult. The nature of the way that we need to solve this problem makes it hard to take that approach. Uh, if you haven't come across this terminology before, integration testing is mostly focused on the full application and testing that in its entirety. Uh, so in a web app context, that would mean firing up the page, checking that things are loading correctly. If you interact with something, it does what it should do. Unit testing tends to be more focused on taking a specific function. You give it given arguments, and it's going to give you the response you expect. Uh, but I found this amazing video that really sums this up perfectly. Um, when that decides to play, let's try that again, shall we? There we go. Um, clearly, this uh, soap dispenser was well unit tested, but no one had actually checked that uh, the bathroom had been integration tested. And that's what we're trying to solve for today. So we need to take a quick look at the deployment pipeline we use at Pixel Cabin. It's, it's the context within which we try to solve this problem. Some of you may have different processes here. Uh, but for us, we always have a staging and a production store. Um, sometimes there'll be many production stores, but we're always doing our development on staging. And each developer will have their own theme on that staging environment. But holistically, using GitHub, we will take a story, do the work, commit and push that to GitHub before having someone else on the team perform code review then pass off to QA and then deliver to the client for their approval, merge that in, and then deploy to the production store using DeployBot. If you're interested in how this process works, please do come and find me later on. I'd be happy to talk more about uh, how to put this together. So as we look to build out an integration test suite, there are a few key goals that we want to be trying to achieve. We want to be able to run the tests uh, while we're developing so that if we break something or if something changes, we get that instant feedback and we can see that they've failed and, and address it. We want to store these tests alongside the code that they are testing, particularly when you're dealing with a multi-branch environment. You don't want to merge tests in in a way where the code they're testing isn't merged with them. And then, and so we're going to see how we can achieve this. Uh, there are a few challenges, but this is fairly straightforward. Um, we're going to look at some of the Shopify-specific things we want to work through here. Then when we get to the automation side of things, we want to make sure that every time that we make a change to a pull request, that the tests run automatically, um, that we're blocking closing out that pull request if the tests have failed, and finally that these tests run automatically every single time that we make a production deploy, just to make sure that everything is merged in correctly and is sitting nicely. And this was the more complicated part of this problem to solve, um, but I'm going to show you how we can achieve this. There'll be resources at the end of this talk, um, so you'll be able to 
go off and set this up hopefully on your own code bases as well. So the tech stack that we settled on was a combination of Cypress for the integration testing and Travis uh, for running these tests uh, in a CI environment. But you can swap these tools out for other things. You don't need to follow this specific configuration. The basic workflow that I'm going to show you would work with other tools as well. So let's take a look at a simple Cypress test and how this can work with Shopify. We're not really going to be using the web-based theme editor. We can't store the test here. We can't run the test from here. Um, so you need to be doing something where you're maybe using something like Slate to pull down uh, that theme and work with it in as close to a local environment as is achievable with Shopify theme development. And Cypress is a really great integration test suite. It does all the usual things you'd expect, such as driving a browser to interact with the page. But it has some nice additional features as well, such as being able to intercept HTTP requests that your code is making. Um, so you can stub out a response, which is great if you want to maybe check that your code is going to be nice if a third party dependency fails. And it can also record the tests as they run, uh, which is really, really helpful if you want to quickly debug, debug why a test failed when it was running as part of Travis. So you can see here, uh, we have the test running for a site that we have, and it's running through a few simple tests, but you get this immediate feedback, and you can play this back later on if you want to see what went wrong and not just need to work with an exit code at the end of the test suite. So we're going to look at a simple Cypress test. If you're starting off with this, some of the things you'd really want to be making sure are working are your add to cart flow or any other functionality that is specific or, or maybe a little bit more complex in your theme. We've also heard today about how there is additional complexity that we're going to be able to build out with themes with sections everywhere and some of the other great features announced. So there's going to be more ways that we want to make sure that as these themes become more complicated, we're protecting against some of these issues. But in this case, we have a simple test that is going to check that a new section we built for the home page is rendering a carousel correctly. And you can see here that it gets all of the product title elements in that carousel, takes the first one, and checks that it has the title test product one. Nice and simple. We also have in here a Cypress feature that you can tell it to screenshot at any point in the code, which is really helpful for debugging, but can also serve a secondary purpose at automating some of the more manual QA things you might be doing, such as if you combine it with Cypress's ability to resize the window of the browser, you can generate some quick screenshots to check that your site looks nice across lots of different device sizes. But we haven't yet told it how to access the home page. So we have a before each block that will run before every single test in this file. In this case, it's calling the visit method from Cypress, and it's just passing in the root path of that URL. Now we define the base URL of the store in the config file that Cypress has in the root of the project. But as we mentioned earlier, every developer has their own theme, and we're not really going to be ever wanting to test or modify the published theme on a given store. So we need a way to make the tests also test the correct theme at that moment in time. So Cypress allows you to overwrite some of its built-in methods. And here we have a function that's going to overwrite the visit method and allow us to manipulate the URL that actually gets loaded up every time we use this function. So here we're going to uh, access the theme ID either out of the Cypress environment variables, which will be helpful on Travis later, or maybe out of a local file. In our case, we have a credentials file where we store some of this information. Build out a new full path where we are appending the theme ID onto the end of whatever was originally passed into the visit method, and then handing that off to the original function that visit was going to perform. And this is really great because it means that now, as that code is pulled down by different developers or run in different environments, we don't need to modify that or hard code in specific theme IDs to ensure that the test is going to run correctly. So we've seen a simple example of how to set up a Cypress test. But the real power of this comes when we can automate it. Because it's easy to forget to run these tests. And it means that we can ensure that the test will also run before that final deploy to production. And some of you may have had this experience where you make a tiny change that you're convinced is completely safe and it actually pulls the whole site down. And some of this automation can really help to protect against that as well without adding a lot of extra manual workload on top of it. So let's come back to that deployment pipeline. We want to see where we're going to put this automation into the process. The first place is right after every push to GitHub. And this is helpful because it means that we don't waste valuable team member time performing code review or other steps if the test can tell us straight away that they failed. The developer that opened the pull request will get a notification, and they can go and fix that up and then resubmit and hopefully then pass and hand off to code review. We also want to do this right before that final deploy to production. But the nature of how Travis integrates with GitHub means that that isn't actually any extra configuration. 
it will just see that as another change in the, when we merge that into our master branch and run the test again and notify us if that's successful. So as I mentioned earlier, Travis is one of many tools that you could use for this. Um, the config I'm going to walk through is, uh, could be taken in a more generic form if you want to use a different environment. But what we're trying to achieve is something like this, where we have our pull request open. And you can see here that we have a test that has failed. It's showing up with that red mark there, and the merge button is grayed out, protecting us from merging that through in a way that would be uh, bringing in broken code. But some of you may be wondering, how are we going to achieve this? Because normally, a Travis or a continuous integration environment, you would take your entire application stack, spin it up in a virtual machine, and then run the test from there. And obviously, we can't do that with Shopify. We are constrained by the fact that we need to effectively run Liquid through Shopify's engine. There are definitely some ways you could look at getting around that. Liquid is open source, but it's probably going to be simpler if we have access to all of the same object types that we're used to working with as we're performing our theme development. So what we're going to do is take the commit, push it up to a brand new theme on Shopify via the API, run the tests, and then clean up afterwards. And the script that does that looks something like this. But don't worry, we're going to take this slow. I know there's a lot going on here. So the first part, we want to compile our theme, maybe compress that uh, JavaScript, compile the SCSS, whatever you have going on, zip it up, and then make it available for us to upload to Shopify. And we use ngrok here to achieve that. Um, the reason being that Shopify's API for creating themes doesn't allow you to push up a binary of that zip. You just have to give Shopify a public URL where it can download the zip from. So ngrok is a great tool. Some of you may have used if you also do um, uh, app development, which can create a dynamic tunnel into whatever machine it's running on. And in this case, it's going to serve up the file that it will find in that public folder. Next, we set up a couple of variables just to streamline the rest of the script. So we grab the ngrok URL from its API to figure out what path we should be giving to Shopify. And then we set up our API path, which has our key, our API password, and the URL of the store that we want to target. And these are all stored in Travis as encrypted variables, which means that you can actually commit that in your code base uh, without having to worry about leaking sensitive information. So with that all set up, we build the body of our post request, giving the theme a title with a timestamp, and passing in that ngrok path that we just built a second ago. Now we can get on to the, uh, the meat of it. We're going to make that post request, giving the body that we just set up. And whenever you create a theme through the API, the response will include the ID of that newly created theme. So we can take that and save that into a variable, which will be useful in a minute when we want to run the tests. So what have we done so far? We've compiled our theme, zipped it up, made it publicly available, built the body of our request, and then made that API call to Shopify, saving the theme ID back that we returned after that success. But we're not quite ready to run the test yet. Now, we've got our theme set up here ready to go, but some of you that have used the uh, upload button before will have experienced the fact that it can sometimes take a few seconds for Shopify to process that theme. You might get that spinner once you've done the upload through this interface. So we need to account for that before we run the test to make sure that the theme is actually ready to be tested against. So we're going to do a simple while loop polling the theme every couple of seconds just to see that it's ready to go, uh, checking for if Shopify is re returning previewable on that theme. If it's not, we'll wait, try again in a couple of seconds. And this can usually take 10 to 20 seconds, depending on how big the theme is and, and other factors. But once that's done, we're now ready to go. We get Cypress running. We give it the theme ID of that newly created theme we made only a few seconds ago. And that's where that overwrite method that we saw earlier comes really into play, because it means that we don't have to have known what this theme ID was before we started this script running. You can also see the record flag here, which is going to tell Cypress to record that test run so that we can play it back later. With that done, it's going to return the status back to GitHub, and we'll see that success or failure on the pull request. We've got one more thing to do. We wanted to clean up afterwards. So we're going to make a final API call, delete the theme, out of the Shopify store, just to make sure that if we're running this over and over, we're not filling up that theme limit and generally leaving things uh, in a mess on the store. And this process is really powerful, because it means that we can run these tests in parallel, if necessary, with multiple themes running at once, because each theme is going to set up its own environment, run the tests, and then clean up afterwards. And hopefully, it saves us from situations like this, where we have our team stuck waiting in the queue with nothing to do. So those five goals I mentioned earlier, we've now managed to achieve. But this isn't a perfect process. There are some platform constraints that we're always going to be working around here. 
And some of the more obvious ones that we've already started to address are seed data, which in other test environments you might be familiar with loading data in and out of the database around every single test. This isn't really very practical through the process that we've set up. Be a lot of API calls and would probably slow down the execution of the test suite quite a lot. So our solution for now really is just to set up the kinds of test products and collections and customers and so on in the store we're going to run against in advance and make sure that then when we build our tests, these run uh, against those sample products. And that example that we looked at earlier was testing against one of those products. It was looking for a test product one uh, in the collection. The other area that we haven't solved for yet is uh, we tend to use theme settings quite a lot for feature flags or for theme specific environment variables. We don't have an easy way right now to build a suite that is going to test multiple variations of the theme settings. Um, something that we definitely want to look to achieve in the future. If there's other use cases you guys can think of, I'd love to hear about them after. This is feels like the first step in trying to improve on this problem, but I'm sure that you guys have come across similar situations that you can think of. But at its core, we've managed to solve and build on some of those key benefits I mentioned at the beginning. We're reducing deployment workload because we can make those merges more reliably each time without needing to worry about whether or not we're going to push something out that's broken. And this allows us to deploy more frequently, which our clients love, because they can ask us to do something and we don't say, well, we'll deploy that next week along with a bunch of other stuff. And it reduces that maintenance overhead because we've seen a drop in the number of times we end up with a production critical bug actually deployed out and us needing to scramble to fix. And it's going to give you and your clients more confidence in the sites you build. So I'm really happy to say that we're open sourcing what I've just shown you. So please do head to pixelcabin.io slash unite where you'll find a repo which has the standard debut theme but configured to run with Cypress and Travis, as well as instructions on how to get up and running with it. So thank you very much. Please exit through the center or far doors, please. Thank you.